Hey everybody, welcome back to On Stage, Off Stage. I'm your host, George Sapio, and this is episode number 168, August of 2023. It is a very special episode. Our guest is Sophie Vudakin. She is a playwright and a junior in high school from Houston, Texas. I had the privilege of reading her play, Tell Us Your Story, a tale of family lost and found not too long ago. Tell Us Your Story concerns adoption and describes what it's like for one young woman to deal with what happens when she discovers that her birth mother has been looking for. Sophie is also a theater enthusiast and has been learning all of what it takes to make the magic happen. Talking about this play, Tell Us Your Story, which I was privileged enough to read a few months ago and was pretty much bowled over by the quality of the writing and the, the depth of the content. I found it to be very, very informative. So let's talk about the play itself. Was there something that, because I imagine as an adoptee, you would have gotten questions about this on and off throughout your life. A lot of people don't understand. Was there one incident or something happened that caused you to sit down and go, I'm going to write this out so people can understand? I think it was the um, my birth parents actually finding me at, at a certain point. Okay. I think it was... At first, it was really hard for me to kind of communicate with my family and friends how I really felt about the situation. Um, Because, you know, it doesn't happen every day that birth parents look for their uh, kids. And so I think that when I was writing it, I have a lot of monologues in it that are true and are really surreal of how I felt during the entire situation of that. And I wanted to let other adoptees know or other people that are in similar situations where you're not alone and you have you can you can have an amazing support system if you're lucky enough to have a support system which i'm guessing you are yes so. i'm very lucky <clears throat> okay is this your is this your first play yes sir it is i've never written <clears throat> plays other than this. what was that like sitting down and tackling something so so important so you know so full of of meaning personal meaning um, it was very different because I'm always used to writing like school, like essays, persuasive or like, you know, informative. So writing something very personal was very different for me because I really have to like writing has never actually been my best subject. I re- I really had to like dig into my personal life and like dig into how I felt and put it into writing. Sure. But it was up to the challenge and I had my mom help me through the entire process to make the play happen. Good. How long did it take you? Um, it took me about a month and a half to really like have a solid play to get critique gone. Who do you like as a playwright? I mean, did you have influences? Did when you were writing say, okay, this kind of sounds like it might be a comedy, it might be a drama? Um, where was your mind going as you were trying to put all this together? With me being in theater, I've been in theater for six years. I've had many directors and a lot of friends that are very creative. My director is also a playwright, so mm-hmm. I definitely um, asked for his advice on certain things, and I also asked my friends who are also playwrights um, that compete in previous competitions, have competed in competitions, and so having um, my director and my friends that are also playwrights really helped me design how I wanted the play to look like. Have you revised it much? Yes, we've been in the revising process multiple times for mm-hmm. different competitions and also with their critiques of my friends um we've been uh just revising and revising and making it better and taking out what we should and keeping what we thought was good you sound awfully professional <laughs> um and, and i i mean that because when i there are playwrights that i i know and playwrights that i've discussed things with that revision to them is not something that they're used to Okay, some of them get very protective about their work. And it doesn't sound like you are. Um, What was the revision? Were there any moments in the revision process where you had a particular problem, either rewriting or removing or adjusting the play? Were there any crisis points for you uh, during this process? Well, a lot of the uh, critique I got was more about um, advancing some of my other characters. There was none like, oh, I needed to add more about my story, which I think that would have made me a little defensive on because it's like my story. 
Sure. But I've definitely gotten points. Well, you should add more lines to Rachel, or you know, you should add more development to her character or to your family's characters. Um, and which was really good, uh, good critique. I've never gotten a critique where I was like, "What are you talking about?" You know, mm-hmm. all well, very helpful overall. Yeah. Good. Well, it's it's a very clear play. It's it's not. Con- I did not find it confusing or too dense to follow it's it's very much up front and i find your characters to be very open and honest so aside from how many revision processes has it been through because it sounds like a couple we've had a couple maybe two or three i think that's a good and we're still working on it because next year we'll uh be having it workshopped at my high school with a bunch of the theater kids. They're gonna workshop it and read it and we're gonna hopefully put it on for people to see, yes. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, has it, has it been up uh, on um, anything past a reading or has it been through public readings yet? It has been through um, a public reading in a Massachusetts um, school and they read it and gave me critique on it. But other than that, it's not been through a public reading, like a big okay. public reading. What was the uh, what was the critique like? What were the reactions to it? All of them said that it was really personal and it was really good. Um, the same kind of just I need to work on my development of some of the characters, mm-hmm. um, and I can maybe make the length longer because it, they said that it was very like, I think very short and condensed, and we could have made it longer, uh, told more of, made the scenes longer, but nothing like extreme where we would have to like revise an entire play. You know. Sure. Yeah, I'm 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 always I always sit back and think when somebody says you might want to make this longer because longer is a word that can have so many different meanings and I've always found that plays if you let them grow to their natural length one of the things that I've found working in development with other with other folks and and with some of my own work is but we want to know where this goes. We want to know what this character does. We want to know what happens after the end of the play. And in many times, that seems to me to be just an endorsement of how interesting the characters have become. Have you thought about maybe developing some of your, your secondary characters more than where they are at this particular point? Do you think that um, would yes. be feasible? I think so, because um, Rachel, my best friend in the play, yeah. um, is a mixture of all my friends that I've had in the past that have helped me through this entire situation. And so there, it, it's a mixture of all my friends, my like closest friends, because we didn't want to have so many friends in it that it would start to get confusing. And sure, so we yeah. just combined the closest friends I have. Um, and so the... The part about how we in our new revision we kind of added that her parents were going through a divorce and stuff and and I think that one of the revisions was that we should add more about how she felt with her parents going through a divorce and stuff and and that is what one of my friends had to go through was her parents were divorced and she's still kind of getting used to life and stuff without the separation of her parents and so mm-hmm. I think that with having that, we could have definitely made the more character development with her character. Okay, yeah. It's <clears throat> it's a question that, you know, today it might seem very much important, but when you read it again in three months, you might think, no, we don't really need to do that. We can, you know, concentrate on something else. Play development, I've found, is a very, very fluid process, and it depends on your perspective a lot. Um, what seems important in April might not seem important in August. Uh, looking over the bio information that you sent me, I noticed that your theory of history is uh, pretty wide. You've done uh, an incredible array of jobs in theater from stage managing to you know playwriting and other things. Let's talk about that. Uh, how did you get involved in theater as opposed to, let's say, s- some other creative art? Um, so in middle school, I was doing violin and also in the theater world and not really interested that much in theater. Mm -hmm. Um, I always thought like theater is such a big uh, time commitment. I wasn't really interested in a lot, but my middle school really, um, teacher really got me 
hooked on to theater and I just kind of stayed there and I've been in all different types of departments in the theater world and I, I just love all the aspects of the technical side of theater and so then that's where my love for theater kind of grew and I just have stayed with it since then. Okay how did your theater uh, teacher get you hooked? Well, I think it was that she really pushed me to try new things. And because mm-hmm. I was always like, well, oh, it's just theater. Like people sing and dance and stuff. I didn't know that, you know, there's so many aspects other than the actors on stage because I never really liked the being on stage part. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she showed me, you know, that you could do spotlights, you could do lights, you can do uh, scenic design, props. And then that's really where I was able to have a creative outlook onto theater. I'm with you. I'll act if somebody desperately needs somebody on stage other than a sock puppet. Uh, Stage managing is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's the most important job in theater. I know I will get comments about that, but too bad. That's what I believe. Directing. uh, Have you directed? No, sir, I'm not. Do you want to? I think that if this play was workshopped and we are at the process where we can actually put it on, I definitely would be on the directing side of it because I do have a lot of visions of how I want it to look on stage. Um, but I don't think other than that, I would ever want to really direct a play okay. music. All right. Well, anything can change in time. That's actually how I got sucked into theater was... Uh, college teacher said, you should write a supply. I said, nah, I don't, I'm not good at that. He says, I'll let you direct. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, yes. The, the, somehow he knew exactly where to go. Bless his heart. Um, how difficult do you find stage managing? Um, I think they're, they're all challenges in each department of theater. Do you have a favorite um, that you, like, if you said, you know, this is, this is what we'll, you know, you'll do for the next short period of time, you would pick something? I think definitely stage managing. I okay. I do love it. I think I love being kind of a float for everyone, um, which is in technical terms, like I guess a float is you get to be in all departments. You uh-huh. just you need it whenever or whoever needs it at that time. And I really like that the stage manager is like the main float. You can go wherever you want on a daily and you can help whoever needs it. Uh-huh. Um, I really liked the adrenaline you get once the show goes and you're just calling the cues. Um, and it, it, when it, the show goes successful, it's really a nice Oh, feeling. yeah. It's nice when the show goes without a cue hitch. Uh, but then again, that's what makes theater so... I was going to say exciting, but it's not, it's not the right word. Terrifying is probably the word when all of a sudden the light cue doesn't hit. Yeah. Um, but you have to be... I'm, I'm assuming you are a highly organized person yes i mean to an extent yeah. <laughs> i mean i think to an extent i am but i don't, I wouldn't say i'm the, like the most in the world but i i'm in the middle yeah because i know uh stage managing you have to not just be aware of the cues you have to follow the lines you have to know who's cast you have yes. to know what the schedule is you are the go-to person that keeps the entire show afloat um, so yeah, well, good for you. That's, uh, that's probably my favorite thing to do besides directing, uh, or playwriting and sitting in the back and waiting for them to get my lines correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah which happens a lot. Um, the, the joke is I'm tired of waiting for the actors to learn their lines and waiting for them to learn my lines. You were, okay, let's talk about the adoption aspect of this, because this is what the play is about. This is where you came to write this. I noticed that you were talking, you wrote that you were on a panel or on panels for Chinese adoptees. And there are so many folks out there, I'm going to say ignorant, but not in a bad way, uninformed uh, about the situation for folks who are adoptees and what their life is like and what they go through, especially when their birth parents enter the picture, their, you know, the birth mom enters the picture. And I can only imagine the confusion that must happen along those lines. You're raised with a family and that's your family. Okay, mm-hmm. that's your mom, that's your dad. 
and this other aspect of your life comes in and complicates things. You want to talk about that? What was that like for you and for those around you? Because I can only imagine the discussions and the, and, and, and the issues that were passed back and forth. Yeah, so um, it, this all happened during my freshman year of high school uh, during finals week. So like I was already stressed about finals and now mm. um, my, um, my birth biological family wants to search for me and find me it was very stressful. Um, but I think that like I had an amazing support system with my mom and my dad supporting me throughout the entire process. It really helped me, um, which was interesting because we had this rule in my family set since I could remember that I wouldn't search or start a search for my uh, biological parents until I was 18. And okay. just for complications of adoption, we just didn't want any complications with it. Um, when did you find out that you were adopted? I've, I've always known. Uh, my okay. entire family is white. So, I mean, there was no, am I adopted or not? I've always known that I was adopted. Yeah. And so I think that with having finding out that there's a whole set of biological parents that were that are parents mm -hmm. in another state that um you know country that are looking for me was um just really surreal and i i i wasn't able to really handle the emotions i mean the two weeks of re uh waiting for the dna test was insane uh i kept on asking my mom like is this true like is it actually happening to me like why now because mm -hmm. at that time I was 16 so like why now like after all these years is she looking for me when she kind of been in my life so much sooner um is it fake I think that was one of the biggest ones that we had in our mind sure, like, yeah. yeah is this ad because it was a Facebook group that my mom was following that we found it um so at first we thought it was a big hoax like what are they just you know like are you trying to get money from us so it was there was definitely kind of questions just going through my mind throughout the process i can only imagine the complications how do you feel about it now i definitely got a lot of my questions answered because i think for the longest time my life i really didn't know what was a lie and what was true yeah. about what i was said because i was found in an orphanage and so we didn't know a lot of stuff about me and so i got I got a ton of answers from my biological parents but communication wise right now it's still rocky and I'm still trying to find a way to maintain a relationship with them but also my adoptive parents mm, I can imagine that's something that will take some period of time to resolve itself something so emotionally complicated especially <clears throat> for someone as young as yourself because um, teenagers are so busy trying to figure out what the world is, where they fit in it, why most of it looks so completely messed up, situation I'm still dealing with a little bit. Good luck with that. I, I, yeah, I, I hope you get the answers you need and come to a, a place in your life where everything's balanced out. Do you think you'll write another play? Maybe in the long run, but I think right now I'm pretty set on Tell Us Your Story. I For right now, yeah, I'm pretty set on just having one playwright. Okay, good enough. I'd, I'd like to get back because I touched on this a little bit before and we're coming to the last eight or nine minutes of, of, the, uh, of the interview. So I want to talk about what I'm thinking of as you're reaching out to other folks. You wrote the play. Mm -hmm to answer a lot of questions that you were getting. And I wanna talk about the, the very, very end of your play where your character steps out and addresses the audience directly because for one, I wasn't expecting that. And the play ends somewhat nebulously. I mean, it's, there's no hard and fast ending, life moves on and that's the way things are. But like I said, your character steps out and instructs the audience about things that are obvious that I guess you must have to answer all the time. Now, I, I said before that you were on a panel for Chinese adoptees. What was that like? What kind of questions did you get? What, what did you talk about? And 
what was the reaction to that? So this is a lot of questions I'm, I'm throwing at you in the past, <laughs> in the last of it, but I want to make sure that we get to this. So let's, let's, let's talk about your panel work first. Um, so yeah, I've done, I've, I participated in one and I just recently hosted one at my school mm -hmm. uh, just this week. Um, and so both panels kind of had the same idea, which was like, how do we talk about adoption and what are the best interests in the adopting and also the, you know, the person that asks us these questions, like what's the best way to handle these situations? Because I've been in some really tough situations. Also, my mom has been mm -hmm. with people being kind of nosy or sure, just yeah. wanting to know what's happening because we're humans, people want to know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that the panels that I've been in or have hosted have really helped me and have shown other people that like adoption is just another like normal way of having a baby, like, or getting a baby, you know, like right. it's a normal thing nowadays. And I think that, I think as we are, you know, moving on in our years, we're realizing it's also adoption is a way to have a child. Um, and so, but not a lot of people know how to talk about it. And so I definitely wanted people to come to these panels and ask questions and know like how do you go about talking about it because not everyone does want to ask questions um and so i think having these panels helped people know like this is how you talk about this situation and xyz okay it, yeah it's subjects like this that are so deeply personal many folks and myself included okay uh, would probably refrain from asking questions for two reasons. One, it's personal and it's your business. And even though I am curious, and even though let's say you and I got to be friends or some, I, I, I and someone else got to be friends, um, where I got to the point where I was curious, I wouldn't quite know how to ask it without A, looking a little foolish, or B, inadvertently misunderstanding the situation. Okay, so it's a little tricky, and this is why I really like the end of your play, which this is this is what you do. This is how you ask it. This is the truth. And yes, it's it's natural to be curious, especially for folks who are not adopted, because it's a situation where it's an alien family thing. We've been so conditioned for the family, and I'm using air quotes here for everybody who can't see me on the audio that when something is different, we are naturally curious about it. There are families that have several different step parents over the years, and that can be unbelievably confusing for everybody involved. How do you react to, you know, someone who used to be married to your, your, your now spouse and what are the kids going through and what are they like? Do you think you could walk us through those lasts, uh, that last bit of your play? So maybe we can, get a couple of answers out there or clarify things. Would that work for you? Yeah, for sure. Um, so one of the one of the statements I said at the end of the play is that you don't know what anyone else is kind of going through. So best not to always assume. Because mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> in the you know play, Rachel also has her family issues. And so friends and family are your support system. And uh, at one point my character kind of pushes her away but it's really important to have those support systems when you go through something so like different than your normal data, uh, daily routine, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and so having an amazing support system and having friends that you can rely on is really important. And so never really push, um, I guess my advice is don't push away the people you love when you go through situations like that. Um, another thing is that I state is that families can look all different ways. So again, sure, let's not yeah. assume anything. I also think it's really rude to stare. Um, it's a natural thing that humans do though. Mm -hmm. But I've definitely gotten some interesting looks over the years with my uh, mom or even my brothers. And so I think, you know, if you don't know, it's best not to ask. Yeah. I think is definitely says without going, says without saying, but um, sometimes it's best to remind people that you know, you don't always need to know the answer to everything. Sure, yeah. But overall, I think that the five things I state are just kind of reminders to people because I think we all know that, you know, you need to keep your friends. Staring is rude. 
uh, there can be uh, mixed race families. Um, but I think they're just reminders to tell people that like a family is a family, friends are mm -hmm. a friend, you know, don't always assume what's going on because you want to know the answers. Yeah. Curiosity is, is one of those double-edged swords that can just turn a situation uh, the wrong way if you're not tactful enough or if you don't know enough to just not ask the questions and let things be. One of the things I, I discovered when I first read your play was that there was a level of maturity in there that I found very, very impressive and a courage to address something so personal and something so possibly misunderstood. Um, and even speaking with you now and, and reading some of the stuff that you, uh, you sent to me, you're reaching out and talking to other folks about your situation and informing that, that's a very brave thing to do. And I commend you on so many levels for, for accomplishing what you have accomplished. So this has been an, a really lovely chat. Uh, thank you so very, very much for taking the time. Um, I hope, I, I know your play is going to wow them when it finally goes up. Um, it's again, I'll say it again for probably the fourth time. It's a remarkable play and I really enjoyed reading it. And one of these days I would love to see it um, full production someplace, uh, maybe with you directing, who knows? Well, thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Hey kids, thanks for listening to On Stage, Off Stage. On Stage, Off Stage is produced monthly and all of our shows can be found at onstageoffstage.org and also on iTunes and Spotify. If you enjoy what we do, please recommend us to your friends. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at OnOffStage. And if you are a theater artist with an upcoming project of interest or know of someone in the theater who'd make some seriously good chat, by all means, send us a note at info at onstageoffstage.org. I'm George Sapio. Thank you once again for listening. And please, stay safe, be careful, not only for yourself, but for those with whom we all share this rock. And as always, happy theatering to all of you. <laughs>